Hello YouTube, uh, we're going to go over some basic uh, problems on the law of total probability and Bayes' theorem. Um, these are some pretty interesting uh, mathematical concepts, um, but the, I'm right, just, right now just going to go over two examples, one of each. And uh, if you want to know more about how these um, probability ideas work, um, you can check out some stuff online and there's some pretty cool information out there. So we're just going to jump into an example. Okay. So, 4 in 100 people have a disease, patients who have the disease, um, the test results correctly identify them as 93% of the cases, and identifies healthy patients in 81% of the cases. What is the probability that the test comes back negative? Okay, so key information here, uh, disease prevalence, 4 in 100. Um, and if it's test positive when the disease is present, then it's 93% accurate um, and then the test comes back for healthy people um, so healthy for 81% okay so what's the probability it comes back negative well first we have to analyze the information we've been given so one way to do this is to create a tree diagram um, so here's the individual and what, and they either have the disease or they don't have the d d disease, so they're infected or not. Okay, so what were the what was the prevalence of the disease? Well, four in a hundred people have it, so if they're infected, you have a four in a hundred chance of having the disease. So that means that 96 out of 100 people do not have the disease or are not infected. Okay, um, but we also have some more information here on both sides, actually. We have, the, if you take the test and you're infected, you can have a positive result or a negative result. And if you're not infected and you take the test, you could have a false positive and a negative result. Okay? So it says, if you have the disease, the test comes back 93% positive. So you have the disease, the test is 93% accurate. Which means that 7% of the time it'll come back in a negative result even if you are infected. Going back here, if you're healthy, it correctly identifies 81% of the patients. So if you test a negative for the disease, that means you're safe. So 81% of the time it is correct. And that means that 19% of the time it's not. And you get a false positive. This is called a false positive. Okay. All right. So what is the probability of a negative result. Well, all you got to do here is trace the paths where all the negative results form. So if you start here, um, wow, that doesn't look right. Let's make it like that. Okay, so you start here, and then you go here, and you end up at a negative result. Same thing. You might not be infected, and the result the results come back negative. So uh, that's kind of, you follow it like that, and what you do for each step is you multiply across. So, probability have a negative result, so we have 4 out of 100 times, it was 7 over 100 I believe, so 7 over 100, plus the negative results if you're not infected, would be well first you have to take this into account and then you multiply it by that. So 96 out of 100 times 81 out of 100. Um, and that is the probability of a negative result. And if you plug that in your calculator you would get 78.04%. And that would be the probability of you getting a negative result. Um, all right, let's move on to the next problem. Um, actually, wait. Let's kind of think about this just for a little bit, just to understand the answer. So if you were to give this test to somebody, um, what would be the opposite? What's the probability of you getting a positive result? It would be 100 minus that, which is 21.96%. 21.96%. So you're going to get a positive result nearly a fifth of the time, actually over a fifth of the time. Um, so this is, this is bad. You're getting a lot of false positives here. So this test is not really a good one uh, that to do. So what you would do to improve your odds would actually be take the test twice. 
Um, if it comes back positive, then the person might have the well, is more certain to have the disease. So just think about your answer. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay, let's move on to the next problem. Okay, so the test shows positive in 97% of all cases when the disease is present, and 3% when it's not. The disease prevalence is 1 in 200. The individual tests positive. What is the probability that the individual actually has the disease? Okay, so this is kind of what I was talking about at the end. Um, so let's do the same thing. We can set up a tree diagram. It's more easier to comprehend this way, um, for, especially for those who don't, aren't too familiar with Bayes' theorem. Okay, so let's start with the prevalence of the disease. So if you're infected, that's a 1 in 200 chance, um, and that means 199 out of 200 people don't have the disease. Okay, and if you administer the test, you could either have two, two, two outcomes. Oop, two outcomes. Um, you could have a positive result or a negative result. And if you're not infected, same thing. You take the test, you could have two results, a positive result and a negative result. Um, because this is, again, a false positive. Keep that in mind. That's really important. Okay. So, reading the problem again. So, when the test shows positive... In all cases, when the disease is present, okay, the disease is present and tests positive 97% of the time, okay, 97 out of 100. That means it tests negative 3 out of 100 times. So even if you have the disease, you might get a negative test if uh, there's a slight probability of you getting that, and um, that's not good <laughs> if you have the disease. But on the other side, too, if... Um, and 3% of the time when it's not. So even if you don't have the, the disease, there's a 3% chance um, that you could test positive. Um, and again, to, re to actually figure out if you have the disease, if, if, that, um, if you're one of those 3%, you take the test again, um, and that will, de or more, or will show accurate, more accurate results um, because your probability would change. Okay, so... Um, first, let's talk about Bayes' theorem. So this is Bayes' theorem here. Um, so if you're not too familiar with it, let's go back a little bit. I'm going to define a few things here. Um, just for me, I'm just going to make this A1 and this A2. And then down here, we'll just call this B. Okay. So this green part here is like a modified Bayes' theorem that I kind of worked on. I'm not, it's probably part of it, but I like to think, I'd rather, instead of using formulas, um, I'm still trying to figure out how I would approach this problem. Um, so I pretty much did this. I said, okay, um, what's the probability that the individual actually has the disease? Well, you could test positive along these routes, right? Um, here, we'll do that this way test positive along these routes. Um, so, you're infected though, so that means you're in this zone here. Um, so how do we calculate that? Well, I kind of just thought about it, but if the way I thought about it is, um, I guess, the probability um, that you test positive, which is just kind of like what we did here, except the probability that you test negative, um, and then you put that over itself, um, plus the, oh, wait a minute, I did it wrong, flip it. So the probability you test positive over the probability that you're infected and you test positive. Okay, so this, this might not be making too much sense here. So um, this slash sign here, or this vertical line, means given. So let's walk through this portion then. So the probability that you're infected, um, given that you test positive, is what we're looking for, right? So then you have to calculate that. You say, okay, what's the probability that you test positive, given that you're infected? Well, you multiply these across and you'd get your answer for this top portion times the probability that you're infected and then that all over pretty much the probability of getting a positive result which um, is the probability that you have a positive result given that you're infected and 
plus the probability that you're infected um, or you're not infected and you can yield a false positive. So what this looks like um, is this. Pretty much you have the probability that you're infected times the probability that you get a positive result over um, the probability that you're not infected times the probability that you get a don't know what happened there but times the probability you get a positive result plus uh, the probability that um, same thing it's pretty much the same thing above but the probability that you have the disease times the probability that you test positive so what we did is the probability that you have the disease and you test positive is here but you also have to add the factor that you may have a false positive and that's pretty much um, how Bayes' theorem works. You have to consider the false positives. So if you punch that in your calculator, you would get 13.9, we'll round it to 8%. Um, so think about that. If you take a test and you test positive, the probability that you actually have the disease um, would come back like this. It doesn't seem right though. I'll have to look into it. Um, but that's really strange. Hmm. I'll have to look into that.